couple years back, I'm at the range shooting the rifle at the top. I walk down, retrieve the paper, bring it back to the bench where I have the gun set up, the ammo set up, my spotting scope is set up, all the stuff. Really nice guy next to me starts talking. Really curious as to what the gun is. He's like, what is that gun? I told him, I was like, it's a custom Tika build that I put together. It's called the Nailer. Stands for Nut and Fancy Long Range Rifle. It is one of a kind. It is actually the prototype. And I showed him the custom plate I had done. Mistress of Dangerous Things prototype. Triple Zero Nailer. He became ultimately interested in buying it. Right then, right there. He's like, dude, I'll buy that from you. How much did it cost you? And I said, <laughs> and this was not the first time this had happened, by the way. I said, well, thanks. Uh, I don't really remember exactly how much I put into it. To make the rifle, I think it was around 25 27 It wasn't cheap. He goes, cool, I'll, I'll give you $3,200 right here. He opens his wallet. And I don't know where he gets his coin from, and out come a bunch of hundreds. Yep, offer to buy it right then, right there. Never told you that story, did I? And I politely declined. <laughs> I said, uh, thanks, dude. I really appreciate it. That's kind of you. And I said, it's not for sale. I'm going to keep it forever. And it's actually worth a lot more than 3200 now. This, the prototype, I don't know, I'll ballpark it, 45 Now it's one, the only one in the world. When I did the review video, when we had the collaboration with that custom shop in the day, you know, there are about 28 TMPers. I forget exactly. Go watch the video. I don't know if I said there that ordered it, and they're rare. They're just very, very, very rare. Is it, you know, that ultimately special in the custom bolt action gun world? No, not really. It's a KRG X ray chassis, custom TK uh, action in 6.5 Creed. Not really, but because of history and where it is, I, I think it is. You know, it's rare. And I could have made $3,200 that day. <laughs> Since then, I've had three TMPers want to buy it in contacting us through the post office. And I was like, nah, I'm sorry, dude. So we're going to hand it down to our kids. And plus, we kind of need it in inventory. Because I need a, a crew member <laughs> in the terms of gun to be around because it's a great test bed testing loads. I know what it can perform. It is all day long, one-third MOA. Even to 1,000 yards, 1,200 yards, if I myself am having a really good day and my dope is correct. No, it's not for sale. Great rifle, though. I mean, it's, it's freaking wicked. I just love the looks of it. I had it dipped in multicam, all that good stuff, AI mags. Go watch the video. I may put a card in there. They don't let me annotate anymore in, in YouTube, but you can watch the video. And that shop way, way underpriced it. They didn't make money off it at all. And later on they said, yeah, we can't do this anymore. We're losing our shirts on this build. I, I said that in a video. I was like, hey, dudes, you better order now because the pricing we're getting on this is amazing. And it was. I mean, just out the gate, if you would have bought these rifles, you probably made $500 if you were to resell it. Custom bolt guns are expensive. And that's the point of this whole discussion. Very, very expensive. 27 is a joke. That's nothing. <laughs> 35 is nothing. Guys are putting down seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars on a custom bolt action rifle. Maybe you don't have that coin, and yet you, like a lot of other shooters, and I'm laughing because it's so funny. I've seen it so many times, are really, really excited about long range shooting. Really excited. I mean, I've come out of the desert before, and I meet dudes, sometimes they're TMPers just shooters and I tell them what I've been doing they're like oh dude what would you do today ARs I was like actually it's a long range day so I'm shooting out to thousand yards and their eyes just kind of open up and they're really interested it's kind of like that Seinfeld episode with the k -k 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 cat fight where all the guys zoom in they're really interested you would think you are describing your adventure to Mars and back yeah, a lot of guys just have aspirations to go out into a wilderness area like I do, set up the range, and crank some rounds at a thousand yards on paper. It's fun. It's challenging. It's difficult. And guys love it. Maybe you're one of those guys. And if so, I'm going to ask you this question. 
Do you have a tool in your inventory? I'm going to assume you have the skill because that's a completely separate discussion. But do you have the gun, the tool in your inventory to shoot and hit the green of this target at 1,000 yards? Now, I should have brought a blank green target. This is just sitting here. It's actually shot by one of my SPR AR-15 builds. Odinworks Tactical barrel I put on that one. And a magnesium magtac receiver 300 yards that's a pretty good shot i thought shooting 77 bthps pretty good it's about moa for me i'm super happy with that but let's say i push this to a thousand yards can you hit it do you have a gun that can hit that that's tough dudes i ain't gonna lie this is a tough tough shot a thousand now if a guy's a competitor he does it or anyone who practices long range all the time with the same gun really key same caliber same load they get really good at it, okay? You would too. You'd get good at it and you go, yeah, I can hit it. Maybe fifth shot or something, I don't know. But if you could group that way to 1,000, I can't. My group at 1,000 would probably be like this. One MOA is what I'm shooting for, so I'm looking for 10 inches or so. The point of this is maybe you need to go get a Bagara B14 HMR and not spend $5,000, $4,000, $2,700. Go spend less than 1,000. And you will have this is a, good a thousand yard right shear. That's the point of this whole intro. And yes, it is that good. And yes, it is capable. The one I got for review from Gunny's, the Great American Gun Store. Thank you, Wyatt and company. Pulled it off the rack. I said, that is a gun I want to test. I saw it immediately. I knew a little bit about Bagara, not a lot. I was like, I need to test it. And I want the B14 Hunter, the Timber model, the Sporter model, the BMP full chassis model. I wanted this one, the Hunting Match Rifle HMR. And since ammo cost is expensive, I chose 308. My nailer is chambered for 6.5 Creed again. This is also offered in that chambering. And I think 6.5 Creed would be the one I would get if you want to go shoot out, shoot out to 1,000 yards. Which, by the way, is tough. I mean, if you live east, east of the Mississippi, and you don't have a ton of personal property or, or private property that you can access... Good luck. It's rough. It's really, really tough. It's tough shooting past 300. Me, I drive two hours out in the middle of nowhere, and I can set it up anywhere. Anywhere. I have to deal with winds. A lot of wind, usually, unless I'm setting up and shooting early in the morning. But it's a small price to pay. And, uh, you know, it's fun. I don't do a ton of it for TMP because not a lot of the products, the guns I'm testing, call for it, and it's very time-consuming. So if I'm testing a 1,000-yard shot... You're looking at the whole afternoon is spent on that one gun. And I just don't know if the audience interest and all that will support it. So that's, I'll, I'll touch on it once in a while. And in case you're wondering, I did not push this one out to 1,000. <laughs> Sorry. Again for time. Just didn't do it. I, I have some paper to show you and we can extrapolate that out. But this, again, we had a really interesting, I think, uh, intro. It is still a lightweight review. I'm going to talk about features. How did it shoot and would I buy it? on the Bagara B14 HMR version. I think a lot of this would translate to the other versions if you like it, but they're more traditional. The Bagaras, you know, wood stocks, walnut stocked. The Hunter will have a number three tapered barrel, much thinner than the HMR, a sporting rifle, a hunting rifle. And by the way, there's a ton of them. There's a ton of rifles that can do what this gun can. I'm not saying for a second there's not, but what I love about the Bagara is its value formula. What you're getting for the money is mind-blowing. And it really, to me, and I haven't heard anybody say this about the Bagara at all, it reminds me of a product-improved Remington 700. That if Remington had pulled their head out and said, what do we have wrong with this gun and how do we need to improve it? They would have come up with this gun. Says me. Now, I think there are some Remington models that are great. It, they're, they are. And I haven't visited their latest production models. Maybe they are. Maybe the extraction, ejection issues, which I've had issues with here in TMP over the years, have been fixed. I don't know. Either a product improved 700 or a custom built 700. Bagara says what they want to do is have a custom quality type rifle in a factory rifle with the Bagara. And I think they've achieved it. That's one reason I have the Tika on the table because it it provides an interesting springboard for the conversation and it is a custom build so it's a good value comparison it's a good performance comparison and yet you're paying what one-third the price 
maybe less with the Bagara HMR. Yeah, you interested? I thought you might be. Features, first up, it is an awesome bolt gun, of course. This is one reason. So you have an adjustable length of pull with spacers all included. I got, I think, most of them in there because I'm a tall dude. I love the coloration of the stock. It is excellent. It is high quality. It just reminds me of Macmillan all day long. It just reminds me of a high quality Macmillan stock. But check this, not as heavy. I've held some Macmillans that are super heavy and I'm like, great stock, super stable. I don't want to carry it anywhere. Flush sling swivel cup right there, awesome. Adjustable cheek piece. And look at how simple this is. I just reviewed another great gun actually. It's a Ruger Precision Rifle. You'll see that video post sooner or later. And adjusting its cheek rise is kind of an effort. It's you gotta unwind this lever. You gotta kind of jiggle it to make it work. Look at this. Just pull it out. Find your sweet spot, crank it down, done. Simple, full pistol grip, double thumbs up. I love this. This is again the KRG X-ray chassis. I love a full pistol grip. I said that in the review. It just gives so much more control. And here we have the same type of angle, the same kind of control over your long range shot offered with both stocks so excellent trigger oh my gosh is a trigger excellent on this the bagara i'm not going to pull it with a scale well heck i will where did it go um, this is why i don't because i eat up time sometimes here it is i pulled it tonight it was three pounds let's see if it does the same thing three pounds of perfection and i think it is adjustable but why mess with it dudes i'm not messing with it 213 on that pull it's probably the best bolt action trigger I've shot, uh, non, you know, bladed style that you have like an internal blade on it, like a Savage Accu trigger. I love those things, by the way. But a, a regular trigger, perfection. Well done, Bagara, built in Spain. They know triggers, Great apparently. Triggers. Metal on the bottom, not polymer. So it's uh, probably mimmed or cast. It's not going to be machined. Nice big old blade for the magazine, which, by the way, is AI pattern. So the magazine of the nailer, Tika, and this is a 6.5 Creed, will actually fit in this right here and work in the Bagara B14 HMR. How wicked is that? It comes with this one. So a five round polymer AI pattern magazine by Magpul. Great magazine. So they chose an excellent, well-proven magazine system. And here's where a lot of problems happen with a bolt I'm sorry, a magazine-fed bolt-action rifle in the magazine. I've had all kinds of issues with that, and I've talked about it in the reviews. It's like, this is something, if you don't get it right, it's going to suck. And from what I saw, shooting-wise, they got it right, as they did with the bolt. So it's an extended bolt handle, total perfection. It reminds me of basically my Model 700 bolt mods I did in the day. So same thing. And I think this is plastic so it's not aluminum and I'm all good with that because it saves some weight by the way so is mine on the nailer that's a I think a KRG extension knob on it really nice bolt though and clears the bell and it's very smooth no binding at all I thought the extraction the ejection on the Bagara B14 was excellent more than I can say for some of the other bolt guns that I've shot here over the years Kind of a key point here. Got to lower this to take that bolt out. Here's your takedown right here, of course. And I'm going to show you super quick. The two lug bolt, again, a la Remington 700. The plunger ejector, a la Remington 700. And the Seiko style super strong claw extractor, not a la Remington 700. Much preferred. Guys for years had been modifying their RIM 700s to have a Seiko extractor. This one comes with it, ready, complete. So super smooth. Loved how this thing shot. I don't remember any, again, extraction or ejection problems whatsoever. And then we have a Remington style safety. My preferred location for me. I love it. I also love that it takes Remington 700 rings and bases. I'm just using one piece tallies right here. Had them in inventory, I was like, cool. I don't have to go out and buy more rings, more bases for this thing. And it fits. I've got this Nikon Pro Staff 7 at the perfect height. Perfect. 
I don't have MOA built in though. So since I don't have it on top of a Picatinny rail and I don't think these rings have any MOA built, but this has a ton of adjustment. Mm. Again, I didn't shoot it out to a thousand. I'd have to check if it has that much depending on the load. It is after all a 308. It's not the flattest shooting cartridge out there, but overall I like that they again made it common with a rim 700. Barrel on this one is perfect. About the same profile as my nailer. It's a number five co uh, contour threaded barrel. I have a dead air can on the tip of it, and I think I did all the shooting with the can yeah, on it. Those are some good groups. Good can, by the way. 20 five inch shots. barrel, one to 10 twist on this. Five shots. Three Begara shots, B14. Three shots. And that's features, five other than 50. swivel studs. And there's a flush mounted no, sling cup or PMC swivel cup there, now, too. PMC. The Bolt three. action rifles are simple. Not that much to talk about. But there is a lot to talk about how it shot. I'll be honest, first time I took it out right here at the range, I was a little bit underwhelmed. I was like, oh my gosh, here we go again. So I shot this NATO load, just kind of messing around, see what it would do. It should have shot it way better than that. PMC was awful. These are 168 grain Molly hand loads. I've got a good group with HSM 168s, Fusion 180, okay, HSM, it liked 168s. So, uh, to be honest, I wasn't super enthralled with the gun. The B14, I thought would be another bust. I was like, here we go again. Here we go again. And then, strangely enough, it went out boldly into the TMP desert and came away victorious. <laughs> so, Jardine and I take the B14 out, and we shot it in the desert, and look at this. So this is five rounds of a hunting load. Remington 180 grain soft point. HSM again, 168 AMAX. That's doing really good for operational conditions. That's really important. We're not on concrete. We are on a polymer table and it's always windy out there. Like I said, Ultimax 168 shooting one third MOA here, dudes. In the desert, Jardine shot those groups. That's Jardine, Jardine, Jardine. I was like, oh man, I'm so excited. Jardine shooting Aguila. That's not a super accurate load. PMC did better. I shot this group of Atomics. That's pretty good. PMC did much better. Oh wait, no it didn't. That's only 50 yards. We were just checking zero then. And then here comes some more paper. Seller and Bellet FMJ. Five shots into easily MOA. I said cold bore. I was really wondering if uh, when you shot cold bore with a suppressor on it, if it's going to throw shots. It's just kind of a note to myself. Maybe with this group I said it. The difference is, in other words. So here it tightened up. It was loose with SMB. Not really a super accurate load, but it's something we had, and it's not going to break the bank. There's a 168 grain match load. XM80, that's a ball load. Federal 168 gold medal. I thought it would do better. It should have shot easily into MOA, but again, operational. Aguila again. Federal 150 grain soft point A max again. I think it's capable of really good groups, though. Kind of like what I showed you there. That one. That's what the rifle's capable of. And I'm going to go shoot it some more before I turn it back or <clears throat> buy it, which leads us to the last talking point. Would I buy this gun? Well, I think I mentioned it. I'm going to foot stomp it again. It was 100% reliable. We had no issues whatsoever. The mag didn't drop. We didn't get any failures to discharge. We didn't get any stuck cases. It just worked. The Bagar B14. And it was refreshing. So, with that reliability, coupled with the potential accuracy that I see, yeah, I would totally buy it. Without, without question. You know, I think... I, I forgot exactly what Gunnings is selling this for, but I want to say it's like nine nine hundred or something like that consider that consider that so you get the magazine you get this wicked stock which by the way has an aluminum girdle in it it's completely free floated this is a really really nice stock it's like a custom stock and it's coming on the rifle you won't have to replace it the barrel every indication i can see it's a good barrel now is it on par with a custom barrel probably not you know, we, if you're a competitor and you will win and lose in tenths of an inch, would I go out and run a Bagara? No, those guys are going to spend seven grand, eight thousand dollars. You know, just make an example here on a gun where they can win with. 
you know we talked to savage and those guys there and they told us all about it you know if you're a long range shooter every every little bit helps but i think for the rest of us where you just want to go out to a thousand yards and you want to be able to hit this the bagara can do it as can a lot of other rifles like i said it's not just the bagara but it's it's time to shine time to consider it and at the value equation i'm going to have some excitement for it we're not looking at twelve hundred dollars fifteen hundred dollars for this it's sub one thousand dollars magazine fed reliable perfect bolt perfect stock it's not outlandishly heavy i think it strikes the sweet spot it's nine pounds without the suppressor on it of course suppressor and the glass and the rings are going to add more weight loaded will add more weight but naked with nothing on it nine pounds it's about what this is the nailer that's perfect dudes perfect perfect weight because then as a shooter i can start adjusting the weight maybe i want a, a more stable heavier platform i'll put on u.s optics steel rings maybe i'll put on a weight system i'll put on a bipod and then i get up to 11 pound weight and then i'm really stable in the shot i'm you know i'm not pushed being pushed around by crosswind that weight's good in that philosophy of use i think this rifle is poised to topple topple the tika t3 dominance i do I, I love the tika action it's everything i said about this one one thing i love about the tika opposed to this one is this is a fully enclosed action i think it's stiffer a little bit better and unlike the tika by the way i don't know if you noticed that i can actually cycle this one with the safety on how cool is that so that's cool a little minor advantage over the tika action i love the tika still got a lot of love for it never going to sell that once again but the bagara it's getting it it's getting it done big time highly recommended that fancy review complete One sixty eight grain match coming in. Lower right. It's more like it. One halt. Still one halt. It's sweet. Winchester. Great gun. Well, if you had a guy that had a lot of time, you know, a guy that was really into precision shooting, you'd probably really work up a Primo load. I mean, that's shooting nice. There's several loads factory. on this paper it loves. Yeah. It's loving those 168s and 175s. Uh -huh. And the 180. We shot some 180 I like, too. Yeah. So. As usual, I'm filming your butt. Holy freak, you're sunburnt. God. Oh. An odd day. Dude, those are some good groups. That's five shots. Wow. Five shots, three shots, three shots. This is that 150. My 150. This was your 150? No, nah, it's 150 PMC. Yeah, 150 PMC. That uh, is. Oh. 
That was a ball load. Ball. It's when we first started shooting. Okay. Oh, that's right. That's right. That what was, was the load on it though? Uh, that was either one PMC. It was either 150 PMC or the 150 M80 ball stuff that I have on my yeah. bag. And then that, that's four shots right there. Yeah. About an inch. Probably about MOA on it. Really nice. It's a shooter with the right loads. Yeah. I'm glad I gave it a second shot, pun intended. Nice. Shit hot, man. <laughs> 